This is the third and last video of the Monetary Policy mini-series, which is part of Unit 2.5 of the IB Economics Macroeconomics Syllabus. In this video, I'm going to talk about inflation targeting, as well as um, I will do a short evaluation of monetary policy and talk about how effective is monetary policy. So let's get started. So what is inflation targeting and how does that relate to monetary policy? In certain countries, central banks focus just on inflation and are guided by the objective to achieve an explicit or implicit inflation rate target. So they are charged with given inflation rate targets, say for example, um, 2 or 3% inflation rate because a healthy amount of inflation is actually, is actually good is actually good for the economy. So inflation targeting becomes their main objective rather than focusing on the maintenance of both full employment as well as a low rate of inflation. Because there's usually a conflict between full employment and um, a manageable average price level or a low, low rate of inflation, in many countries, central banks just need to focus on um, maintaining the inflation rate or achieving an explicit or implicit inflation rate target. This is called inflation targeting. So how effective is monetary policy? How can we evaluate monetary policy? How effective is monetary policy in um, influencing the level of aggregate demand? Well, first of all, the effectiveness will depend on the independence of the central bank. Usually monetary policy is a lot more effective when the central bank is independent of the other branches of government. Therefore, the central bank only needs to focus on inflation targeting. Um, another strength or good thing about monetary policy is the ability to adjust interest rates incrementally. The central bank doesn't have to um, cause big changes in the interest rate um, if the central bank is independent. The central bank can gradually raise or lower the interest rate and see how the economy is responding. There is this ability to adjust interest rates incrementally, which is a flexibility that doesn't exist when it comes to fiscal policy uh, because changes in taxes and changes in government spending often have to go through a laborious political process. Um, the third strength or the third good thing about monetary policy is the ability to implement changes relatively quickly. Again, it's, it's much quicker for the central bank to um, uh, set inflation targets and to change or adjust interest rates. So these are the advantages or the strengths of monetary policy. However, okay, remember we're conducting an evaluation, so we're looking at strengths as well as weaknesses. There are some weaknesses or limitations of monetary policy. What are they? Let's find out in the next slide. So some of the limitations or weaknesses of monetary policy. First of all, there are still time lags. Even though monetary policy is quicker to adjust um, when compared to fiscal policy, there is usually a time lag, um, a recognition time lag, um, a time lag between recognizing the problem. Then there's an implementation time lag, um, the time it takes to actually decide to change interest rates. And then there's an impact time lag. There's still um, a time lag between changing monetary policy and actually seeing changes in the level of aggregate demand. Um, also, monetary policy is usually very limited. Its effectiveness is very limited in increasing aggregate demand if the economy is in deep recession. So monetary policy alone by itself will not pull the economy out of a deep recession or a depression. It is not enough by itself. It needs to be coupled with um, favorable fiscal policy that would pull the economy out of deep recession. Um, the third limitation is that there's often a conflict among government macroeconomic objectives. We've seen in the previous video that any attempts to increase um, aggregate demand as a result of, say, adopting an expansionary monetary policy might boost employment and increase economic growth, but they will sometimes raise the average price level and cause inflation. And the opposite is true. A contractionary or a tight monetary policy might bring down the average price level, but it comes at the expense of higher unemployment and slowing down economic growth. This conflict among government macroeconomic objectives does um, uh, pose some limitations, does present some limitations to how effective monetary policy is. Um, and this concludes our monetary policy mini-series. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.